Hello, this is Tamil. I will go over simple perspective rules. Then I will get into Clip Studio Paint tools for creating perspective and how to manipulate it. It has really, really great um, options and features. Let's get started. This is one point perspective. In order to create perspective, you need horizon line that is going to be where your camera is or where your eyes are at. If your object is below the horizon line, as you can see here, you can see that the top of the box could be seen by the viewer. As you can see, this is one point perspective. In one point perspective, it is not used too much, but in short, this is where the object is going to face you straight on. So you're only going to see the front and it has no angle to it. It is super easy to draw. You just need one point and one horizon line and you should be good to go. You can see it when you walk on the railroad tracks, for example. That is going to be one point perspective for the most cases. This is another example that you can see that the object is actually above the camera and above the horizon line. So you can see the bottom of it. This is a third example I wanted to show you how to find the horizon line. So if you have an image, a picture or whatever it might be, and you don't know where the horizon line is, how do I find the perspective grid? Where are the perspective points and all of that? Find and, you know, look for the eyesight where the face gets flatter and flatter and you barely see it or you cannot see it at all, that is where usually the, the horizon line is. So if you can see on the image, the camera is exactly the same level as the top part of the cube and that is not going to be showing in the image at all. You're just gonna see a square and you're not going to see the top of the cube. And that is how to find the horizon line. And this is my old painting I made with my drawing class. As you can see, it is simple, big, big paper, and it has one point perspective. And in short, I grabbed a huge piece of paper. I used everything, you know, traditionally used a pencil, just drew a horizon line, and then I have one point right there to the right side near the middle. And I just started shooting, shooting arrows everywhere. And that is my perspective. It is super easy and super fun exercise if you've never done perspective before. And I highly recommend it. In this example, you can see that I actually drew the perspective lines and you can see the 90 degree angle, right? the horizon line and the straight line do not get affected by the one point perspective. The only perspective is going to be affected is the sides of the cubes. So you don't really need to think a lot when you draw it and it has a little bit of depth to it. This is two point perspective and you just need one horizon line and two points. In this example, you can see that if you put the two points of two point perspective, too close, you're going to get distortion. The left and the middle have some distortion to it, especially the middle one. It is very weird looking because the perspective points are very, very close to each other. But the box in the middle to the right is actually looking way better than two other boxes because the perspective points are pretty far apart. In this example, you can see that I drew a box, but this one is actually called isometric perspective. If your perspective points are way, way too far and they're parallel to each other, you're going to get this look that is used in mobile games a lot. Because mobile games don't have, you know, a lot of resources to use because phones are not too powerful, they're using usually houses or other objects drawn in isometric perspective. In short, everything has the same exact angle and same exact perspective, so that it is easier to combine items without it looking too weird or distorted. If you put the perspective points too far, this is what you get. The last image is basically me drawing two-point perspective on traditional paper. 
There's some mistakes to it, obviously, but this is fun practice. The image and the paper are pretty, pretty huge. And I highly recommend trying doing traditional first, just a little bit to get a taste of it. I'm not saying, you know, draw 50 boxes traditionally. No, it's fine. You can do digital, you can do Clip Studio Paint, you can do other software. That is completely fine. Just keep in mind that it's way easier to learn through traditional. And you can see that I use two-point perspective and it's a little bit distorted, but not too much. And I'm just going for simple cubes because it is way, way easier to focus on the cubes and see the mistakes if you make them with the cubes. As you can see, the only line that doesn't change and is always consistent is the one that is in the middle. That is why, because we're using two-point perspective. If you were using three-point perspective, that one is going to change. This is three-point perspective. It is not used too much, but it gives you this dramatic look to it. In short, to use it, you just need one horizon line, two perspective points that are on the horizon line, and then the third one somewhere off um, the horizon line, just at the bottom or at the top. If, for example, you come up to a very, very tall building and you look up to it, this is going to give you three-point perspective. If you have a photo of a drone or bird's eye view that is looking down on buildings, that is also three-point perspective. In these two examples, I simply put the same exact building, pretty simply drawn. One is two-point perspective, so it has regular, normal, perspective and then the bottom one has three-point perspective so you can see that the building has a little bit more depth to it and it feels like it's expanding at the very top compared to the other one it's very specific look and it depends what you're drawing but most of the time people just use the two-point perspective in order to create perspective which is the easiest way is going to layer rule and frame create perspective rule after clicking that you're getting a prompt and this is going to give you one point perspective two or three after that you can just click create new layer and click ok this is what you're going to get automatically you're going to be in the operation tool so very very top left tool and you want to be in the object mode and that will give you an option to uh, you know, change the perspective that was created in Clip Studio Paint. After you click on it, you're going to get many handles. The one that is in the middle is the horizon line. Once you start moving it around, you can see that the two points that are with it are going to move along the horizon line because they're connected to it. If you want to move the entire thing, and you want to have more control over it, you just go into that big, big button that has arrows on it. And once you grab that, you can move the entire perspective setup in your canvas. To change perspective, you just need to find the vanishing points, which are the two dots that are connected to the horizon line. Once you click that, you can just move it around and change your perspective. As you can see, it gives you two guides for each perspective point they're not going to change your perspective. They're just for the show so you can have a reference for your perspective. If you move them around, your perspective actually doesn't change and it is only for you. If you want to have more guidelines and see how the perspective looks, you can go into the grid. Once you click the perspective at the very bottom in the tool option, you're going to have grid. And there are three buttons and each one will correspond with XYZ. Once you click those, it's going to give you the perspective lines. And in order to fix it, because there are some problems or distortions with it sometimes, if it's too dense or if it's not dense enough, there's a number at the bottom that you can change in order to switch the density of the entire reference. And that will help you to draw better perspective. Another option that is very, very important is fix eye level. And in short, if you have a perspective point, vanishing point, and you move it around, 
you want it to stick to the horizon line. If you don't want it to stick to the horizon line and you don't want to slide along the edge, you want to turn off fixed eye level. Usually I keep it on default because it helps to move the horizon points uh, along the line without distorting the horizon line angle. If you're going to use the small dots that are connected to the small guides, they're going to change the angle of the vanishing point, which is also useful if you want to adjust it to a specific, you know, angle. If you have a reference image and you want to align it towards that, that is also useful. Go ahead and do that. The horizon line also has these small handles. They do pretty much the same thing, except they change the entire perspective at a different angle. Let's say if you have a room that you want to draw with a very skewed, you know, camera angle, then that is how you're going to do it. There's also the small icon next to the transform. That one is pretty self-explanatory. It's just going to move the three main icons for moving anywhere you want on the canvas. If it's in your way, you can just move it along and just be done with it. You don't want to see it, move it to the very left. If you want it to be very close, just bring it back and that's about it. There's also a one small button that you need to know. It is usually next to pretty much every guideline that is on the perspective ruler. That small button if you click it, you're going to turn off the snapping of your brush only for that specific guideline. In case you don't want to, you know, connect to the straight uh, guideline and you just want to do the angled ones, you can turn off it in the middle and that's about it. If it turns green, that means it's off of snapping. If it's purple, then that means the snapping is on. After you select brush, usually it should be snapping to the perspective immediately. And you can just draw any building or boxes or a car, whatever you might need to draw. Another cool feature in Clip Studio Paint is that you can turn off the perspective guidelines in different ways. At the very top, the second icon that is usually on is called Snap to Special Ruler. If you turn that off, you're not going to be snapping to the ruler at all and you're going to be able to draw without the guidelines of the perspective. If I turn off the middle, for example, for perspective, now I can only draw the angled lines without the straight on uh, perspective guide. Another important feature that you need to remember is if you're in operation tool in the object mode, if you want to add perspective points into add vanishing points, you can right click. And after that, there's going to be options and you want to click add vanishing point that will add a vanishing point to your perspective. After you added the vanishing point, you can actually have it off the horizon line. You can put it anywhere on your canvas. It will still work and you can use the small button for turning off some of the guides to keep one on or you can combine and mix and match. This is very, very up to your workflow and your interpretation. Pretty awesome tool. And uh, another cool feature is that if you right click, you can actually split it into two parallel lines. That is also useful. So it is really up to you as to how you want to use this tool. If I don't want it, for example, click on it, make sure it highlights red, right click and just click delete vanishing point. There's also another way to create perspective in Clip Studio Paint. If you don't want to use the default way, you want to go into the ruler and then in the ruler section, you want to click perspective ruler. And after that, you're going to get the option of using that tool and setting up a one point perspective using two lines. Here's how to do it. By default, it is actually fixed eye level is turned off. And if you want to adjust the perspective without messing up anything else, then you're going to have to turn on fixed eye level 
and after that you can you know mess around with it and just add whatever you need to there's another amazing tool that is just awesome to use in clip studio paint if you create the perspective in the tool section then other tools will also follow it not just the brush so for example if i have selection then i can click and drag and it will follow the actual tool and the perspective that is on the canvas i can also use shapes and it will also be created in perspective i can also use the dialog bubble and it will also be in perspective pretty awesome once you click and drag it will not be finalized you can just move around your mouse around the canvas and it will switch between the different perspective points to try to figure out which one you want and just click on it the second time and then it will work and here is the demonstration on how to use it you can see it on the canvas this is a painting i made i will link down the time lapse in the description and you can see how i made it using the perspective guides in clip studio paint um, i just don't want to make this video too long and you can see that i used simple two-point perspective i didn't make anything complicated and you just keep uh, drawing lines and it just works and it uh, looks amazing let me know if you have any questions at all i will try to answer any of them you can read the full article in the description as well. I will link to it in Clip Studio Paint tips uh, of the month. There's a lot of resources and tutorials there, highly recommended and happy painting.